where did you get the passion for uh, music? How did you start? <laughs> um, well, I guess since I was a, a very little kid, I loved music. Um, I, I was never formally trained, but we had a piano in the house, and so I would, I would pick out tunes by ear. And when I was, I guess, 13 years old, I, or 14 years old, I was cast in a nationwide McDonald's commercial. It, it, it aired all over America. And because of that, I made a little bit of money, and I was able to buy my first synthesizers and drum machines. So I spent all of high school writing pop music, and uh, still all by ear, I didn't read music, but it's just what I, I love doing more than anything. And then when I went to college, I joined the choir, and that was it. Then I was, I was hooked forever. Okay, so then you were actually educated in music afterwards. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right. Although I have to say I'm still, yeah, I have a master's degree now too, but I, I still struggle with, with written music. Uh, it, it's, it doesn't come completely naturally to me still. How did you get the idea for the virtual choir? This young woman named Brittlin Losey sent me a fan video. She posted it to YouTube, and she was singing the soprano line to a piece of mine called Sleep. And it was just so tender and innocent and beautiful. And I had this idea immediately when I saw it. If I could somehow get 50 people all to sing at the same tempo, and we started all their videos at the same time, and they all sang in the right key, it, it, would, it would have to make a choir, right? It would, it would work. How did they actually do it? I mean, technically. It's a lot of work. There's two parts to it. There's the, there's the, the audio and the visual, of course. How long did it take to make both a Sleep and Lux Arunque? Lux Arunque, ironically, they took about the same amount of time, even though Sleep has more than 10 times more videos in it. But Lux Arunque was entirely done, audio and video, by a single person. How did you get to speak, for example, at the TED? It was the most amazing thing. One day on, on Facebook, I received a message from Chris Anderson, who is the head and the curator of TED, saying, I just love what you've done. Would you be interested in presenting at TED next year? And I, you know, I fell out of my chair. I couldn't believe that he was asking me this. So I wrote back and said, yes, my God, of course, I'd, I'd love to. And then I, I wasn't prepared, though. He, he put me on the, the very first, uh, I was one of the first speakers in, in the morning, the, 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 one of the first four speakers. And that, it was just a huge honor and a, and a real thrill to be there. Do you think yeah. it would be possible to crowdsource other artistic uh, works? Absolutely. Um, I'm surprised, first of all, that nobody has done dance, which to me seems so obvious, to have individuals dancing wherever they are, be choreographed, and then cut them all together the same way that we do the virtual choir, and then make, you can actually make pictures. But yeah, I think we're just starting to scratch the surface of what's possible. What is the piece of classical music that, or the composer that most inspires you? God, um, uh, I mean it's endless, really. But uh, two that I always that I always go back to for inspiration. One is the is Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. The other piece is equally well known. It's the Rite of Spring, uh, the Sacre du Printemps by uh, Stravinsky. And you know Stravinsky wrote it when he was thirty one, and he, he used the orchestra in a way that. I don't think had ever been used before and has never been used since. So those pieces, and then I should say anything written by Bach. <laughs> Who do you like among the contemporary ones? I love John Adams, uh, he's an American composer. Uh, Arvo Pert, an Estonian composer. You know, I just heard a piece by a Norwegian composer named Anders Hilborg. Actually, my wife, Hila, sang it in Los Angeles with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Uh, that was pretty stunning. Where do you find all that music? Where do you listen? Where do you, where do you, where, what's your source, you know, where you find all that fabulous music you have, you, you listen to? 
I guess two places now. It's either from friends suggesting things that I should listen to or just online. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. You spend two hours on YouTube just bouncing from track to track. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, and, and you can find your way from, you know, you could be, you can go from Lincoln Park to, to Ligeti in, in eight moves. And, and there's, there's just so much stuff. Also now, an interesting thing has happened. Maybe you've seen this, but on my Facebook page, um, people are sharing things with me. Uh, do you think that some modern tools such as the uh, iTunes Genius could actually help uh, and be, you know, the, the kind of source you can use to, to get new stuff? Or it's more useful to use uh, a social approach? Hmm, that's interesting. Um, yeah, so, so the, the best I've seen it so far is with Netflix. So, so Netflix, of course, is very popular in the United States, and and they have a very very successful algorithm for determining what you might like based on your previous choices. And so many times I would go and it would say, "We recommend this for you," and I was pretty amazed at the recommendations. I thought, yeah, actually, that's yeah, that's what I would like. Um, and then that was only based on on things that I had 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 liked or had watched. I imagine that that kind of thing is going to get more and more refined. The, the trick is, the trick is with that, something like, for instance, even with this Devin Townsend thing, I don't think any algorithm would ever recommend that to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, maybe they will. I, I don't know. But this person, uh, Shay Hendren, said, uh, you know, I thought you might like this. And who knows why he thought I would like it. It could be completely random. But I... I I have a feeling that, that there are the, – the problem with the, with the algorithms is that they're going to give you what you like, and maybe that's not what you need. 